All right. Okay, good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Cormac Tor. I'm an assistant research professor at the Center for Autonomous Materials Design at Duke University. And today we're going to be, so welcome to this morning's work, today's workshop on AFLOW, which is an, the Integrated Infrastructure for Computational Materials Discoveries. Okay, so my, as I said, my name is Cormac Torr. The other, me, the other um, workshop hosts will be Dr. Corey Ozes, Dr. David Hicks, and Dr. Marco Esters. And they're all also, um, they're all postdoctoral researchers at the Center for Autonomous Materials Design at Duke University. And our uh, center director is Professor Stefano Curtarolo. Okay, so then just to start off, so for the introduction, just to give you some uh, brief logistical information and some um, procedural information. So first we're going to we're going to be using Zoom. I think everybody's reasonably familiar with Zoom at this point, but just a couple of brief things. So first thing is please keep your microphone muted if you're not speaking. Um, if you do have a question, please use the ch chat or raise hand functions. Um, so to raise hand, you go to this reactions button and then you'll see this raise hand option. And then once you raise your hand, it'll come up like this next to your um, name. And then we'll keep an eye on this. Otherwise you can post something in the chat. Okay, so we'll have exercises as part of each session. Um, for these exercises, sometimes we'll, uh, sometimes we'll keep the group together, but sometimes depending on how many people we have and how complicated the exercise is, we might break up into, great, into breakout rooms within Zoom. Um, so there'll be one instructor in each breakout room and you can ask them for assistance. Um, you can share your screen with them if you have specific problems, etc. There will also be conducting exercises by the browser, and for some, for some of the other exercises, we'll be using these Google Colab notebooks. And also for best results for these, we recommend using the Firefox browser. Somewhat ironically, we found some uh, issues when we use when we try to use Chrome, especially with displaying figures. So the exercise materials are available at the Google, in the Google Drive. They can be downloaded either from the email I sent yesterday from the links, or we can use these links here. So again, the slide, and we, we can, we'll post these in the chat as well. So you can um, use them. So for each session when we're at, we're using the, the, the um, Colab notebooks. You can also download PDF copies of these from uh, Google Drive. And so these are from the various ones. Again, you can find these notebooks online or at the links I sent yesterday. And I'll post this link now. See if I can post this into the chat. Oh, no, I know it exists. Post the pick and post. So, say for example, is the PDF for today for this first for this introduction. So, if you want to uh, click on this link, you should see this PDF. You should be able to download this PDF. Okay, so then to open up the Colab notebooks, the way it works is like this. So if I select one of these, I open it. So what I get is a screen that looks like this. Okay. So then you just click on go open with Google Collaboratory. If you're logged into Google, it should open up automatically. Um, then the other thing you should do is you should do file and save a copy. So you make a copy of the file. Then you'll, you might get something like preventing a pop-up window. So you just open a new tab. And now you can see here, you have a copy of this file. So you can scroll down and then you have little snippets of code that you can run. So you can just press this button here to run it. Okay, let me go back. So but we'll go through this during each session and we'll do some examples first so you can see how it works. Okay, so this is what I said, it's important to make a copy. Otherwise, everybody will be working on the same notebook and it will be that will cause some problems. 
So yeah, here's our copy. And then we just click here to run the cell. Okay, so now just to motivate, why are we interested in doing this uh, automated materials design? Well, first of all, we're looking for novel materials for specific engineering applications. So things like uh, thermal barriers, thermal barrier coatings for aerospace and, and uh, en energy applications. So here you want to put a um, coating on top of a turbine blade to protect it from the hot gases from the uh, exhaust products. So you want something that has a low thermal conductivity, a thermal expansion that matches the blade, and also something that's quite corrosion resistant. Other examples will be super hard and wear resistant coatings for machine tools, so for drill bits and cutting, cutting blades, et cetera. Um, another thing we've looked at in the past is biocompatible corrosion resistant alloys for medical implants. So things like bone screws, hip replacements, and so on. Other things that people have looked at using these techniques include uh, photovoltaic materials for solar energy harvesting and uh, solid state ele electrolytes for lithium ion batteries. And also for things like um, searching for superconductors or for heating sinks for white for advanced electronics. Okay, so then to give you an idea of the kind of space that we're trying to um, trying to explore and why we want to automate these types of explorations. Here's the so here's the periodic table. Here are all the basically the stable the, the elements of stable isotopes, the non noble gas stable elements stable elements. So there's about 78 of these. If you look at the way we combine two, you can get about 3,000. Combine three and get about 76,000. Four, you get about a million. Then by five, you're up to 20 million. And then up to six or a quarter of a billion. And this is just, just simple. This is material systems, so alloy systems. This is not taken into account different uh, stoichiometric ratios, different types of structures. Once you do that, so you take into account the different backbone structures, different stoichiometries, et cetera we end up with something like 10 to the power of 177 possible materials that could be formed. So obviously we can't do this uh, one at a time by hand. So we have to start automating the process. So the way we do this is we use this uh, automated computational materials discovery. So we start from either experimental structures in the databases like the ICSD, or we start from what we call structural prototypes that Dr. Hicks will be talking about in a later session, in the, se in the se session after the next one. Then we pipe these, we, we use these to we perform uh, automated quantum mechanics calculations for, for these structures using either, uh, use, typically using the VASP, the density functional theory package. Then we pipe the results into us and we format them into a searchable and sortable database. And then the results in this database, we can either interrogate it to find specific candidate materials for specific applications or else use the data to train machine learning models to, to, to accelerate these predictions. So the way Aflow works is it wraps around the DFT code from a single Aflow.in input file. You can set up multiple DFT calculations. If you find an error in the calculation, it restarts the calculation, changes some parameters and tries to rerun it. Then at the end, when the calculation is finished, it parses the results. So it could take like a single calculation and then do things like the electronic band structure or, take, or calculate the electronic band gap. Um, otherwise, it can combine multiple DFT calculations to calculate things like thermal or elastic properties, or calculate, for example, the um, kind of thermodynamic phase diagrams, so these convex hull phase diagrams that Corey will be talking about later on. And then it pipes the results into a database for online storage and dissemination. Okay, so here's the AFLA.org homepage. So Marco will be talking a bit about this in the next session in more detail. But note that we have had now about over three and a half million entries and over 700 million calculated properties. So here's a breakdown of the properties. So you can see how many band structures we have, how many binary systems, ternary systems, and so on. Also note this AFLOW schools and seminar page. So you can find more information about schools like this one and also about the AFLOW seminar series. So in particular, um, this is a, the seminar series is something that we've started recently that runs every second week um, on usually on Thursday afternoons at 3 p.m. Eastern time. So here's um, the next one will be on uh, in two days time with uh, doc, Dr. Christian Carbonio from the Fritz Haber Institute in Berlin. So then here's the AFLOWAP.org application. So this is what we're going to be focusing on in today's workshop. So 
In the next session, Dr. Marco Westers will be talking about the Mendelib search, this advanced search application. And you also talk a bit about more about the API, how you can access this data programmatically. I'll be talking about the Aflow ML in the last session. So this, this uh, machine learning application. Uh, Dr. Hicks will be talking about the crystal prototypes and the, the um, Aflow online. So this, this sort of structural analysis tools we have. And then Dr. Coriosis will be talking about the Aflow Convex Hall phase diagram application. Um, just to mention about the Aflow code, we're not going to be using it for today's workshop, but if people are interested, um, they can download, download it from here from aflow.org, install Aflow. And it can be used on Linux, Mac, and Windows. For Windows, you do require some additional software, either the Windows subsystem for Windows 10, or for older versions, we, you, you will need to install something like SigWin. And then there's also some configuration files. So this .aflow.rc file. Um, so you can just set things like the paths to different files and so on. Okay, so again, and as I said, we have information on past and future AFLO schools is available at aflow.org, aflow-school. So we have different types of schools. We have half day, full day workshops like this one. Then we have a multi-day schools, like say the four day workshop that was hosted by uh, Texas A&M recently. Or next month, we have one that's supposed to be hosted by TU Dresden in Germany, a full week workshop. Um, so then these multi-day schools contain a lot of additional information, particularly on running how to run these first principle, actually run these first principle calculations using Aflow. And so if you are interested in participating in these types of workshops, either check out the uh, Aflow School um, webpage, or you can contact Professor Stefano Cartarolo at stefano at duke.edu. So the next session, so this is just an outline of what we're going to do today. So the next session will be Mark, Dr. Marco Westers. He's going to talk about, give an overview of the database and talk about the database interfaces and particularly this, particularly this AFLUX search API that allows you to programmatically search and download the data. The next session will be uh, Dr. David Hicks. He'll be talking about AFLOW SIM symmetry analysis tool, as well as the AFLOW prototypes tools. So this is how you would take, if you have a, a structure, how you would actually um, decorate that structure to make a new hypothetical material, and also how you can then compare structures to see if they're identical. Then in session, and after lunch, Dr. Coriosis will be talking about the AFLOW convex whole phase diagram uh, application. And then finally, I'll be talking about the AFLOW machine learning. Uh, application. And then I'll wrap up with some brief concluding remarks. Okay, so with that, I think I'm going to hand over to Dr. Marco Westers, and I'm going to stop sharing. <laughs>